Hey guys, I'm Hetty and welcome back to part 8 of the Fan Art Feb series and for today's video I'm doing Harley Quinn. Um, for the character design for this one I really wanted to mix parts of her design from the different versions of her. So there's like the different game versions and there's obviously the new Suicide Squad version. So I wanted to incorporate all the different parts because there's loads of different bits that make up Harley and I thought it'd be quite interesting to combine them and take some of my favourites. So the hair is more the Suicide Squad and the top is more of one of the game series where she wears the leather corset sort of thing and same with the uh, studded shoulder pads and the choker is Suicide Squad version, same with her underwear and then the on her legs I did sort of like the tattoo of the print that's on her trousers. I think it's from the Arkham Asylum, the Batman games. I think it was that design where on her trousers she had like the four diamond shapes. So I wanted to incorporate that in there as well. So I thought I'd do it as a tattoo on her leg where it normally is on her trousers. And then again, I'd swap on one leg. She's got the knee pad that she wears in one of the games. And the other one, I kind of went off on my own on that one. I thought I'd do sort of um, over the knee boots with the typical jest jester, I don't know, the like checkered pattern anyway, but then put some of the colours from her multiple colour schemes in there. But yeah, I'm really happy with how this came out. I did actually draw another version of this out, which was in my sketchbook tour video, and I really didn't like how that was going. I liked the idea behind it, like the costume idea, but for the actual composition, it, I really didn't like it, and the anatomy was terrible. But this one turned out much better, so you'll see the sketch to this one in my next sketchbook tour video, which hopefully won't take me too long to get ready to do that. I'm hoping to do a sketchbook tour video every month if I can, but we'll see how that goes. But for today's topic I want to talk about, I was thinking of talking about how to gain confidence in your art. I'm not completely confident in mine, but I am a lot more confident than I was, say, a year ago. and. The one point I will say is confidence can't be given from to like to you by somebody else. It's something you have to earn and it's something you have to earn from yourself. Yes, when people give you nice comments saying, "Oh, this looks really cool. Um your drawing style is really nice. The composition's amazing. I love the colors." That helps boost your confidence, but no one can make you confident other than you. So when to make yourself feel more confident about the art, then yeah, go to people, go to your friends or your family and ask them, you know, I've done this piece, um, what do you think of it? Just be honest with me and don't take to heart the bad stuff that they say, take it as constructive criticism. Learn from it. Yeah, some of it may be harsh. I mean, like some of the things I used to do, the heads were like far too big or the eyes were too far apart. And the best critic I find is my husband. He tells me it straight now if there's something off with the picture and I, I like you know when you have that feeling and you know something's off with it then you can ask someone he can just point it out straight away which is amazing for me because then it sorts it out for me but to be confident in your art you need to also be able to self-criticize and pick out see if you can see what you've done wrong and if you can't ask someone and then you learn how to recognize that yourself the next time but other points I would say is don't surround yourself completely with other creators. You need, you do need to have advice from other creators. Like if you get stuck on, like some of us on YouTube, we all ask each other for advice. Like if we can't think of a background to do that sort of thing, that's great. Do that, but don't surround yourself completely with creative people because then you find that you compare yourself to them you compare your work to them which is not what you want to be doing because then you are going to feel less and less confident in your work and again group feedback is much better than single person feedback it's something they practice a lot at university here you leave your piece of work on a table with a, a feedback sheet and then everyone in your group will go around anonymously and write down a piece of feedback. They have to write at least one good point because you can't just be nasty to each other. But then you also write down constructive points, like what could they do better? And that actually helps a lot, especially if they've written it down because you can refer back to it. 
But again, one main thing I will reiterate is do not let negative comments get you down. Learn from them. Some negative comments can be the thing that will save your art. That one thing on it that is just what's making people say bad things is what will make you learn for your next piece. It's not always doom and gloom when people give you bad comments. It's going to happen. You've just got to get past it and move on. And don't worry because everybody gets a bad comment all the time. So just remember confidence isn't given, it's earned and it's earned from you by you if you get what I mean. So anyway I hope that helped you in some way and I hope you enjoyed the art and the video and I will see you tomorrow for the next one. Bye!